like to welcome you to today's webinar. This webinar is part of our educational online event series brought to you by Hawkridge Systems and our partners in digital manufacturing. Our topic today is on multi-jet fusion surface finishing, how to improve quality and consistency. My name is Robin Gonzalez, and in addition to being your host today, I manage the additive manufacturing sales for our strategic accounts here at Hawkridge Systems. Joining me today is an expert from Post-Process Technologies, Francesca Baird. Francesca is a Post-Process Technologies technical trainer with an in-depth knowledge of 3D printers post-processing techniques. For those of you new to Hawkridge, we've been providing engineering and manufacturing solutions to North American companies for over 20 years. As you can see, we have 21 offices and digital manufacturing labs across the country. In addition to products and services, we partner with the leading providers of engineering, manufacturing, and 3D printing solutions. So that's just a quick overview on Hawkridge. Now let's get to our topic today with Francesca from Post Process. Okay. Francesca, there you go. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. There we go. Sorry about that. Um, so thank you for the introduction, Robin. That was great. So now I can hop directly into our agenda. Um, so we're briefly going to touch on a little bit of who exactly Post Process is, a little bit of our history, and then we're going to talk a little bit about, um, so this is support removal, but we're going to be talking about traditional um, surface finishing. Then we're going to go over our solution for surface finishing. We're going to look into some case studies that you should hopefully be able to relate to. Then finally, I'm going to summarize and then open it up to you guys for any questions that you might have. So. Um, what we technically, what we typically ask is what technique you're currently using for your post printing. So actually, I'll throw that back up there again. Um, so this is something that we're going to talk a little bit more about. Um, you know, traditionally, what we are seeing are vibratory, our vibratory tubs, hand sanding, um, water or sandblasting, or or potentially there's some other methods out there. Um, I apologize that you guys weren't able to answer this one. Hopefully, we have one more poll that you should be able to use. So uh, moving forward, a little bit about post-process, as I said. So post-process was established as the first comprehensive solution provider for additive manufacturing's post-printing needs. So we entered this space in order to allow the industry to scale to its fullest potential. So we have a range of patent pending machines that run our proprietary software and chemistry in order to provide post-print solutions across all of the additive manufacturing technologies. So moving forward, we are going to discuss specifically MJF surface finishing and how we can increase your consistency and help you boost that throughput. However, if you are interested in these other technologies that you see on this slide here, um, feel free to go to either Hawkridge's website or ours, and we can direct you to some other online offerings that we've hosted throughout this virtual time in our lives. So the problems that we've seen across the entire additive industry are the traditional approaches that everybody takes to finish these products. So anybody that has used a traditional method such as manual sanding or um, with sandpaper or picks or a manufacturing system such as a vibratory tub, you're quickly going to realize that these processes can't be scaled. The time consuming nature of each of these methods reduces the amount of parts that you can post print. And this, in turn, is going to create a bottleneck for your throughput. As you continue to grow your operation, the significance of this lo low throughput is also going to grow. So in addition to this, the parts that you are able to post print are going to vary dramatically in quality due to the inconsistent nature of these traditional methods. So all of these pain points together made for ineffective and costly processes that result in drawn out ROIs for your printing production. So I'm gonna dive into some of the specific pain points that hopefully you should be able to relate to if you're using one or more of these traditional methods. So specifically focusing on the problems that arise from traditional post printing techniques for a minute, anyone who spent time finishing with a vibratory system can tell you, can tell you how hazardous it can be for complex geometry. Because these systems are not specific to additive manufacturing, they lead to wide inconsistencies as well as damages at the very least, if it's not going to damage your part, you're definitely going to see wearing down of those fine featured details. And then even after spending all of that time in a vibratory machine, your parts are still going to be left with some unsightly layer lines. So long cycles, 
long cycle times with these sort of systems are not conducive to being able to scale your additive workflow. Manual controls require more operator time, taking away more time for a valuable task. And then when we focus on the manual aspect, if you're just sitting there with sandpaper trying to finish these, you're never going to be able to get the same results from one person to one person, each part to part, or even each day to day. And once again, we're really taking up your time where you could be doing more valuable tasks. So briefly, I want to stop and talk about um, what we did in collaboration with SME, which is the Society of Manufacturing Engineers, if you're not familiar. So we conducted the first ever additive manufacturing post-printing survey in 2019. So this report provides an in-depth look from the end user perspective of common practices and challenges in 3D post-printing today. So these, uh, this data should show you really how taxing it is currently to do surface finishing across the entire industry. It's going to show that removing and automating these processes is really going to help scaling these printing operations for the future. So what we're seeing is the majority of people are having issues with its length, the length of time to finish your parts, which when it comes to manually finishing your parts and using hand sanding, that's the most common technique we're seeing. That's really typical to the industry, so I am going to talk a lot about that, as well as the other options that we get put out there. So the key to our solutions is the combination of hardware, software, and chemistry that were all specifically designed for MJF materials. So in your process today, you're likely sourcing at least two of these components from different vendors, and this is going to create more work for you on top of the fact that these components are not designed and tested to work together for additive manufacturing the way that the post-process solution is. So this is a quick slide to summarize all of the benefits that I'm about to dig into throughout the rest of this presentation. And the first topic that we're gonna discuss is how the solution is going to enable you to have the most advanced process control. So the technology behind post-processes solution is what we call SRS or suspended rotational force. This technology utilizes proprietary detergent abrasive media, and a vibratory circular motion to apply even mechanical force and maintain uniform contact. So the level of control that our software allows over these energy sources with real-time process monitoring is especially important for the range of media options, geometries, and material used for MJF printing, as well as the complexity of these parts that we typically see these printers printing. So this level of control is going to allow you to print and post print more complex and delicate part geometries because it's specifically designed for additives. So it's going to take care of any cosmetic issues and textural issues while keeping the integrity of that part intact and reducing that breakage risk that's commonly associated with traditional fumblers. So as well, you're also going to be able to lower labor costs by significantly reducing the amount of operator attended time. When it comes to higher throughput, the key is automation here. So by introducing a post-process solution, we have seen our customers being able to finish five times more parts per cycle than a traditional vibratory machine. So by shortening post-processing times by 80%, customers are now able to print and post-print more parts by introducing our software controlled solution. And the software does really so many other things um, other than just you know, shortening the amount of time that you have to spend. Really what we're doing here is simplifying the process and minimizing operator errors. And we really minimize operator errors and with each aspect of that comprehensive solution. So on the software side of things, we've given it a very intuitive, almost smartphone feel. So you can pick it up really quickly on top of the fact that our application engineers will come on site and fully train you. We have uh, quick select dosing frequencies uh, so that you have the ability to change your media, change what sort of abrasion you want, and the software is automatically going to update considering how much detergent you have left in your reservoir. It's going to let you know automatically how long you can run a cycle before pausing, so that's going to eliminate any guesswork. And then as well, we do have proactive and preventative maintenance warnings, so that's going to let you know that well before that you have to perform that maintenance, that, hey, this is coming up, so now you can plan ahead for any downtime for performing that maintenance. And additionally, when it does come to maintaining our machines, we've made them very simple to maintain. Um, with this, it really comes to just uh, draining out that sediment tank, 
but we do have videos and step-by-step -step guides to help you through every step of that. So we're really going to mitigate any issues that are associated with operator error. So the level of control that our software allows over these energy sources is really important. So the software-based solution is going to give consistent and repeatable results that enable technicians to shift to higher value operations. So we've seen that we can achieve consistent roughness averages. So if you're wondering what a roughness average is, it's uh, the difference of the peaks and values, valleys along the part surface. So we use what's called a profilometer to drag a little needle across the, the top of that, and that's how we measure this. So in some testing, we've seen that we were able to achieve less than two microns while maintaining the integrity of the edges and resulting in surface losses of less than 0.1 millimeters. So I know that's a lot of data and a lot of specifics, but we do have a white paper that's available for you to download so you can take a deeper dive into exactly the specifics and what we've been referencing throughout this presentation. And as well, we do have some ROIs in there so you can get a little bit more familiar with that. So here's a quick look at the envelope available. So you see the envelope there, and then as well, a part size guideline. Because the maximum, you're not gonna wanna fill the entire envelope with one part, just because the media will likely not be able to uniformly address it. So we give you the envelope as a gauge, and then what the largest part size is gonna be that you're gonna finish in this machine. And this machine is known as our Rador. So the screen that you're looking at now is really to show you how simple using these machines are. So especially when it comes to software, people immediately start to get a little bit worried that you know it's gonna be complex and you're gonna have to be a really skilled technician or engineer to use these. But we boiled these down to really simple parameters. What you're looking at is just selecting a one, two, three, four, which correlates to a certain media. So we'll come to your site and let you know what media and what dosing level to use. You choose your cycle time. Uh, that's going to be based on what we've gotten from benchmarking your parts and seeing how long it took to achieve the finish that you're looking for. And all you have to do is simply press play. And then the last thing I really do want to emphasize is the benefit of our additive manufacturing expertise. Since post-process is solely based on additive manufacturing, we can be a resource both pre-sale to be sure that our solution is right for you. That'd be using our benchmarking tool as I've referenced. Um, so that's when you send us in your parts, we process them and send you back with a performance evaluation and the parts to look at so you can see exactly how they were processed, what they look like, and how long that took. And as well, we can provide you industry-specific support for the lifetime of your solution. So we can act for we can act as a resource for you in order to continue to scale and expand your printing operations. And an example of how we do this is the fact that we do have multiple PhD chemists on staff, and their sole role is to stay on the bleeding edge of this continuously developing industry for the ever-expanding list of additive materials that are always being you know, added on. So we have people whose sole role is to make sure that we stay on top of that so we're always excited to work and learn more as the industry is growing. So now we're going to talk about some ROI and case study examples. But before we do that, I do want to define exactly what we look at when we do calculate an ROI. Um, so it starts with fully understanding your current operation. So we evaluate your current print cost and then what portion of that cost is due to post-printing. So a few key examples of the numbers we look at are your labor cost, the time spent processing each part, and then what percentage of those parts are damaged. So then we compare this to what your post-printing cost would look like with our solution, and this results in your ROI. So the example we're looking at here, the customer was printing 30 parts per day. They had a labor rate of about $30 per hour. So we, we were able to decrease operator time from 10 minutes per part to just five minutes per part. And then we decreased the amount of parts that were rejected or broken from 1% to just 0.1%. So that resulted in over $140 of savings per day. And that resulted in a 35 week ROI. So you can see how really the key to this is by taking all of this work out of your hands. Now you have the ability to put it in a machine, 
run a batch process where all of the parts are being processed exactly the same, controlled by the software, so you never have to be checking in on it. And now you're going to be saving money and having parts that look and feel better. So to wrap things up, I really just want to summarize the transformative benefits that you will experience by switching to a post-process surface finishing solution. This unique software-driven approach will provide the consistency necessary to, to optimize your process and plan your workflow. We remove that bottleneck by allowing you to batch process your parts without risking any warpage. And final, finally, by reducing that tedious manual labor, our solution is going to accelerate your process end to end and free up your time to do more value added work. So if you're curious on how to get in touch with us, you can email info at hawkridgesystems.com or give them a call at that number there um, as well. I believe in the chat, we will enter some info there, potentially Hogridge's website. But I really do want to take the time to thank you guys for coming out. Once again, thank you guys. I, I, I want you to know that Hogridge system is here for you from design to data management, to simulation and stress testing, all the way through prototyping production. We have the software, the services and the expertise to help you achieve your goals. And we love challenges here. So let us know what's on your mind and we'll do our very best to help you solve it. And with that, um, I'm just gonna say thank you again and we'll see you soon. <music>